Hi everyone. Today uh, we are going to learn about what are the 50 different uh, gathering um, re requirement gathering techniques. So I am taking these techniques from Babak book. So if you know what is Babak, it's a it's a book, it's a standard book for business analysis. So this is um they have an exam. Okay, so there are like two different business analyst exams. So one is for entry level, one is for mid level, and one is for senior business analyst. So for all those exams, right, this book is like very, very important. So if you're planning to do any kind of business analysis for uh, certification, this book is like a Bible for that. Okay, so uh, in this book, I'm going to like first research. There are many contents in this book. For example, if you see here, there are many chapters here. So it, it talks about who is, a, I mean, like, who is a business analyst? What is business analysis? What are the key concepts? So what are the different kind of, um, um, I mean, like as a business analyst, right? Like whatever you're going to do. There are many chapters here. Uh, but we are going to first start with techniques. Okay. Because why we are going with techniques is there are like 50 different techniques. So we are going to learn one by one. You need to know the techniques in order to gather the requirements. So for any business analyst, First, you need to know the techniques. Without knowing the techniques, you can you, you cannot do requirement analysis or you can do you cannot do design definition and all, right? So first, you need to know the techniques. Let's learn all these techniques, 50 techniques, one by one. And then, even if you are preparing for the exam or any kind of interview or some people like uh, ask only from this book if you are... Uh, it depends upon company to company, but uh, most of the companies, right, they may be asking you, like, at least you should know some of these techniques, okay? So, there are like 50, you need not memorize everything, but you need to know what is what is each technique. So, if they ask in the interview, it will be very helpful. So, let's go by that technique one by one. So, what are the different types of techniques? So, first one is acceptance and evaluation criteria. So, what is acceptance criteria? As you all know, if you are very familiar with Agile methodology, this acceptance criteria is very, very important. So when you are gathering, okay, when you are gathering requirements or even if you say here they have given that you can apply, apply this technique on all levels, okay, it could be from high level to a more detailed level. So it could be any levels of the project, you can make sure that the acceptance criteria is like defined very well so that we are close to this accuracy so for example um, a business a business owner is giving you like one very 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 plain requirement okay he is just saying that i need an application to uh, i need an application where i want the feedback from the customers okay so what happens is if this he's a restaurant owner he wants the feedback from anonymous like he don't want the members details or the uh, customers details but he just says that i would just want the feedback okay they can come uh, just log into the application and then provide feedback that's all all he wants is the feedback for the menu okay that that's the stand very high level he's saying so in that case like when you define acceptance criteria how will you define acceptance criteria you first of all that is if whether that application should be a desktop application or it should be a mobile application okay how are you going to get that feedback okay of course we are going to use applications whether it's a desktop whether like person has to log into the website click on the feedback like form and then submit or person can just log into the mobile application for that particular restaurant or submit the feedback however so when we say anonymously, like they don't want to give their name. Okay. So what are they going to give feedback? For example, they're ordering like only a particular menu, right? We have to have that in the drop down list. We have to make sure like for what they're giving that feedback, right? So you need to have all the menu list. You need to have like, and then the feedback also, right? Whether it is going to be just like one space where they can enter multiple lines or it, it or just like whether it's good, fair, uh, something to improve like how what what's the kind of format they want so on a very very high level when we go for acceptance criteria we need to make sure that okay i understand that you're you're telling the requirement on a very high level but it it 
like factors like when we when we gather requirements from the business owners like everything is very important cost performance and how like functional that um, that application works everything is important right so acceptance criteria is very very important even on a very high level requirement you need to make sure what is exactly they are they want or if you want in a more detailed requirement in that also you need to make sure what exactly they want so you need to document what is their whether uh, they want from out of that particular product so this acceptance criteria for me from a practical experience i would say that you need to write down the more detail you go the better don't uh, do very very high level acceptance criteria it should be like very specific very clear and very precise because you may assume something which the business owners may not even think about so you may assume in a particular context but the business owner doesn't need that okay so what i would say is whenever you are writing acceptance criteria for any requirement make sure you tell them okay you want the customer to log in through mobile okay mobile the customer needs to log in through a mobile application and submit the feedback form in this particular format like that you need to like document very specifically and then give it to the business owner and he can review it and give you the provide the sign off so i would say the more detailed it is the better okay so for example there are so many elements here what are the value attributes so ability to provide specific information ability to perform or uh, support specific operations okay that's what i'm saying what is specific like what is the exact exact functionality that application needs to do right so that those value attributes are very very important the member needs to be an anonymous uh, member needs to choose a particular menu and should be should submit the uh, feedback in this particular format so it should be very very specific okay when you write the uh, requirement it needs to be very very specific it needs to be more detailed it needs to be clear and it needs to be crisp and so that you are not assuming something and the business owner is not saying something and you are not doing any assumptions there so very clearly you are writing the requirement so it is very very important when you write acceptance criteria it's very important how you are going to define so you have to uh, keep all that in mind what is the cost performance what's the usability and functionality so in order to develop that application how much it will take okay if we take multiple we can, you can give different kind of models okay so if you do th- if you go through this model this is the cost or if you go to a different model then that will be a different cost and how will be the performance how user friendly that application can be what are the different types of difference in the functionalities based upon that you need to define the requirements and you need to do the test accordingly okay so based upon the acceptance criteria you will be defining the requirements and you will be the, you doing the user testing based upon that and you can consider uh, depending upon the pass or fail that is this is like one solution when you have multiple solutions then you have like defined here by so you uh, you take all the value attributes but still you you only the criteria used to assess value they will be potential solutions here the measures are very different okay so how are we going to measure the that measuring value should be like by ranking for example if cost is more okay then if you are developing an application for 1 million dollars if the cost is more but performance is very less would you like go for that modeling no if the performance is very very high okay and the cost is less will you go yes of course we'll go cost is less performance is very high you go for that measure so how are we going to rank based upon the solutions right so we need to, so one attribute can override another attribute so we have to consider which is better as a whole for that particular product and then you need to find the measure but mostly in agile we'll go for this okay so first is like you define the acceptance criteria make sure your requirements are very crisp and test accordingly and you pass it. this is a standard one this is what we will follow in it okay and next one is like how like testable it is so testability so every acceptance criteria should be in a testable form when you write an accept, acceptance criteria it means that that acceptance criteria can be tested through uat so this is often achieved by uat testing user acceptance testing okay so you 
a member logs into the mobile application and pro, uh, selects the menu what that uh, any kind of menu whatever he has eaten and submits the feedback form in this particular format if you write that acceptance criteria it needs to be tested in uat you can test that scenario if you cannot test a scenario then that cannot be an acceptance criteria every acceptance criteria needs to be in a testable form okay and then uh, depending upon the measures okay so we can we can say what is the benchmarking so when when we when we have when we measure how do we measure e each acceptance criteria what is the benchmarking or like, so that is based upon like as a team we have to decide whether this acceptance criteria is good or bad whether it will be having negative scenarios positive scenarios or uh, how are we going to judge it that is like that is like an expert judgment you have to make sure that you have to understand that you are satisfying stakeholders needs accordingly you need to write the acceptance criteria right so how can we satisfy the stakeholders or the business owners needs accordingly we are going to create the acceptance criteria so what is this method so this is like pre um, when you when the when the business owners they give you the requirements in your mind you need to automatically like you need to think about what can be the ex acceptance criteria for this business requirement okay so accordingly you can write down the requirements and then you you need to like you need to ma make sure like how i can achieve this business requirement how can i write it down how can i convert into a this requirement to a testable form how can i make sure this passes the uat so that is like you have to, it has to go through in your mind in the back of your mind the strength is like i always make sure uh, this is a very very good technique because in any kind of agile methodology if you are able to test a requirement right in like 90% of the time that's a, like a, that's a good requirement like you have gathered properly you are able to test it if it passes it's good if it's fail you're going to do you're going to recorrect recorrect and you're going to do it again so so the strength is like most of the agile methodologies this acceptance criteria is very 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 popular but what is the limitation i would say is like if you if the stakeholders having like very like very different kind of very different kind of requirements then it could be very challenging if they want it in as i said like acceptance criteria should be in a very simple format but if they're having very di very different needs okay very like they want a diverse needs or they want from different kind of platforms they want to test and all that that time your test that acceptance criteria may not work out so sometimes it could be challenging or sometimes due to contracts like uh, we cannot test the scenario okay if it's going to be to different vendors or if there's a third party involved we cannot test a scenario based upon the acceptance criteria so there could be some limitations but positive like it's more i would say the strengths are more compared to the limitations so this is the one of the very best method or very best technique you need to understand writing an acceptance criteria or during gathering requirements itself your mind should be able to like think about what is the correct acceptance criteria for this scenario how can we test this requirement so um, it's very very popular in agile methodology acceptance criteria i hope this uh, video is helpful thank you for watching